Hi, my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and motivational speaker. Today, I'm going to tell you what the exotic country of Japan is like, because I've been there. What is the exotic country of Japan like? Oh, ho, ho, ho. so. Japan is probably one of my favorite countries to visit for multiple reasons. One, I'm part Japanese, and no, I, <laughs> I didn't take a DNA swab test. My family direct lineage, my grandfather's 100% Japanese. His parents came from Japan. I know where I came from. <laughs> okay, ignore that controversy. But what is Japan like? It is one of the coolest but most complex countries ever to travel in. The first time I went to Japan, well, every time I went to Japan, I had a friend to visit and meet me at either Shinjuku Station or Tokyo Station. I can't remember. She, she can remind me where we met. But when you first get into Japan, it's pretty crazy. The, uh, the Narita Airport, where you land normally for most entries into Japan, is really far away from Tokyo, like way out there. And of course, most flights to Japan land in an absurd time, like five in the afternoon. So that means you flew all night, you probably made the mistake of sleeping on the plane. Then you get there at five o'clock, you're jet lagged. You go have dinner and what do you try and do? You go to sleep and what happens? That's right, you can't go to sleep. So the first experience of you going to Japan is likely your inability to sleep. So if you use um, Lunesta or, or I don't know, one of the other sleep aids, which actually may not help you sleep at all. That may be something to consider, but Japan is totally technologically insane, way more advanced than the United States. Their cell phone service is faster. Their internet data connection is way faster. It was faster like oh we have a rollout in the united states you've got a hundred megabit internet and we can get a gigabit if fiber japanese had that like a decade ago they had way faster internet so technologically yeah huge advantages uh let me get my phone here yeah they they, they had oof, blurry camera blurry ah there we go yeah, their, their phones, they had the same iPhone sort of thing, but even before the smartphone era, their phones were way better than American phones. So the technology blitz in Japan is just like unreal. So if you're a technoid, totally cool country to visit. Um, gosh, was it, there, there's this whole uh, Akihabara, sorry, I can't remember the name, a shopping district of technology one. It's just nuts. But the cool thing about Japan is the incredible contrast of traditional versus hyper bleeping modern. You will see some ladies walking down the street in these wood clogs with their kimonos totally tightened up. And those kimonos probably cost like 10 grand. The clothing that Japanese wear, no matter, unless you're like well suited and well heeled, you're going to show up to Japan and feel like a slob. It's like going to France or Italy or somewhere. You, you just, as an American, we don't dress as well, maybe on the East Coast, but man, you get to Japan, buttoned up, tied, sport coat, ladies dress, skirt, shirt, they look sharp and they always look sharp. Uh, so if you plan to go to Japan like in your like I do in my fleece jacket and you know, not even jeans but travel pants and runners know that if you go out to dinner you will stand out for multiple reasons one you're not dressed as sharply it's just the way it is two you're not Japanese everyone there is Japanese they have black hair they have brown eyes they're Average height, I think, is five foot because I could see over almost everybody. Now, this is not a racist comment. If you're one of those freaks, oh, oh, shut up, click off the video, and go away because that's garbage and the rest of the world doesn't work like or craziness, especially the Japanese. They don't care about your nuttiness. So, that's another cool thing about Japan. Men are men and women are women in Japan. You better believe it. Okay. 
So that commentary aside, Japan also is so beautiful. The gardens are perfectly manicured. The walkways are always clean. When you go uh, into any shopping area with small little local mom and pop shops, there's a guy with a little garden, uh, garden like flower watering pot, and he'll be out in front of his shop, and he is watering the sidewalk. Why would a guy who owns a shop water a sidewalk? Oh, that's a silly thing. No, it is not a silly thing because that guy is out there watering the sidewalk and then he takes his broom and sweeps it all off. Do you know what he is doing? He is taking the accumulated dust and grime of the evening prior. He is watering it to get it wet and then brooming it off and then doing his best to dry it to keep his store clean. He prevents dirt from coming into his store as well as he can. Now, in Japan, when you go into somebody's home, dear Lord, take your shoes off. You will get in so much trouble. They little, usually have this little landing spot of a mud pad. See, I wear hiking boots traveling, and man, it is a pain in the butt. Where are my boots? Yeah, so if you do like I do, Sorry, and you wear hiking boots to Japan, like I like to hike around, and it's gonna be a major pain in the backside because you cannot step from the little square area, which is like two feet by two feet, onto the tatami mat. You will get in trouble. They will actually say something. Ah, ah. You gotta be able to sit down and unlace this whole contraption and get it off to your feet. So even though I like traveling and my boots is much more comfortable, just know it's going to be a drama getting those shoes on and off constantly. So the thing about the stores is they don't have tatami mats. They would love to have you take your shoes off and keep the place clean. Japanese are like neat freaks, which is totally cool because it's clean. Did I say clean? I meant clean. So the guys water the streets, he brooms it out. And he keeps it clean and the stores are so nice. Another thing, if you work retail, and my girlfriend works retail, I've got friends who work retail, when you get your, and you're working at the cash register and you get the product and you put it in the bag, like say a, a shirt or something, how do you put it in the bag? Well, you just kind of bundle it up and stuff it in the bag. No! No, 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 no. The Japanese, take that shirt, they lay it out, they fold it properly, they crease it down, it's this nice package. Then they wrap it in that tissue paper sort of stuff. They might even put a bow on it, like legit bow wrapping. And then they put the bag that they're gonna put it in and then they slide it in there. And then, I don't remember if they, they flipped it over, it's been a while. And then they hand it to you like this like it is a gift, like they really give a bleep about the product that they've just packaged up for you to sell to you. Unlike America, I love my American brothers and sisters, but you guys are just ramming in the bags in there trying to crank it out. Once you go to Japan, you'll realize just how sloven we, we are in the States. Are we the, the richest country in the world? Yep. Do we have a lot of craziness? Yep. But do we have the 100% customer service best quality? No way. I got lost in the Ginza shopping district of Tokyo, the, I think, most expensive shopping district, I'll probably, arguably, on earth. Maybe Piccadilly Circus, maybe something Milan or, or France on Champs Elysees. But I got lost there and I went into the store with these two ladies and I've never seen so many zeros on a price tag on shoes ever. And I try and blunder my way through trying to explain, I'm so sorry to disturb you. I really apologize. I'm completely lost. Can you help me? Days before smartphones and, you know, offline Google Maps where I could figure out my way. And they said, oh, yeah, yeah. And they can't speak very much English. And I can speak like just a tiny bit of Japanese, barely. And they spent like 10 minutes going through maps, showing me where to go, and were super courteous, got me going, and then they went out and pointed me to the police box to keep me going. When you go into an uber expensive store in the United States and you're just dressed like a regular traveler, 
How do you expect to be treated? Think about that. If you work in that world, you know, you don't know who I am, but I have definitely had some positive experiences in America and negative experiences in America. Like, hey, you know, that what's this guy doing? Get him out of here. He's not a customer. The Japanese didn't really seem to care. They cared that I was there. They cared about me as a human being. They did an excellent job. So your experience, should you go to the exotic country of Japan, will be hugely different. But it will also be hugely different because you can't read any of the signs. Ah! Yeah, that's right. Um, I know I'm a bit crazy about it, but man, it was really hard to get around the country because I just couldn't read anything. Fortunately, there's some English signage and I had a map and I'm wandering around like this. But it was a really great time because even if you get lost, you're in Japan. Who cares? You could be in like Afghanistan or Syria, Chechnya. That's a bad place to get lost in. But getting lost in Japan? <laughs> Who cares? It's a tiny country. You're not lost anyway. You're not going to get stuck out in the middle of the outback in Australia and die from thirst. Ain't going to happen. So the exotic country of Japan is just totally cool to visit. I would love it and definitely would love to go back one day, spend some more time there. I mean, there's tons more country to explore. Tokyo, Kyoto, Miyajima, Hiroshima. I don't know where else I went. Oh, lots of places. Been all over the place there. Uh, not to... Nagasaki or up in Sapporo. I would love to go to more of those places. Uh, very expensive to travel in. Oof. And they all do everything almost all in cash. Because after their credit collapse crisis in the late 80s, people don't really use the credit cards that much. They'll bring out a grip of cash and you won't get robbed. Last story. If you left your wallet accidentally on the, some concrete divider on the street, tomorrow when you came back, high probability your wallet would still be there because people don't steal stuff there. I grew up on the border and people stole stuff all the time coming over the border. Jeez. Watch my dad's video on that. Because people coming over the border and stealing your bikes and oh, it's just terrible. Japan, it doesn't happen ever, ever. And if your wallet isn't there, chances are you go to the local, it's called a police box. It looks like a tiny little room where the police stay chances are your wallet was turned in there and lost and found it's just such a different experience did japan have a lot of challenges and trouble oh yeah think declining population but with a complete social safety net they're in trouble too but whatever you're there as a tourist you don't care about the social safety net you're just there for the experience the food the sushi of course yeah love it highly recommend going there. Uh, Japan is the arguably safest country in the world. I could send any female friend or uh, family member to Japan by themselves and I would never ever have a thought that they would be robbed, raped, murdered, beat, or, or whatever. Nobody would even make a move on them. They wouldn't say, hey, would you like to go on a date? It just doesn't happen. So as a woman, if you want to go to an exotic locale, totally different experience, go to Japan. You will not regret it. And if you're a guy, check it out too. Cool. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and motivational speaker. Please like and comment on my video. Subscribe below. That would be wonderful. Please support me on Venmo, PayPal, and Patreon. Thank you very much for watching.